You all say Brother Paul's words aren't the truth. If that's so, why are his words in the Bible? Since Paul's words are in the Holy Bible, they are inspired by God, and they represent God's words, words that we have to pursue. Amen. Amen. Brother Paul's words are recorded in the Bible. That makes them the words of God. Exactly. All of Christianity acknowledges this. No one would dare deny it. Amen. Amen. We have been pursuing according to the Apostle Paul's words. Are we wrong to do so? Hmm. Brothers and sisters, although Paul's words are indeed in the Bible, that does not represent they are God's words. The Bible was composed by men, not by Jehovah God himself, nor was it composed by the Lord Jesus or the Holy Spirit. How could something composed by men be perfect? In the Bible, the words of Jehovah, the words he told his prophets, and the words of the Lord Jesus are God's words. God has never testified that the words of the apostles represent his words, nor has God testified that the words of the apostles are inspired by him. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, is the word of Paul. The Holy Spirit never testified to that, nor did the Lord Jesus. Only Paul himself spoke those words, so his words are unfounded. In their time, the apostles wrote letters to different churches. And people would say that these were the words of Brother Paul or Brother Peter. They all knew that the apostles' letters were indeed the words of men. None of them would treat these letters as the words of God. That is a historical fact. No one can deny it. In the age of grace, only the Lord Jesus was God incarnate, and only he could express God's word. The apostles were men used by the Lord, and when they spoke, they spoke the words of man. Their words only represented their own understanding and experience of God's words, even if some were inspired by the Holy Spirit, but they were not God's words. Even Paul himself didn't dare claim that his words were God's words, or the inspiration of God. Nor did he claim to speak for the Lord Jesus. So, if we try to claim that Paul's words are also God's words, and obey them as we obey God's word, because they are in the Bible, we are making a mistake. Yes. How can they, they say it's a mistake? It's unfair to judge the Paul. I have never thought about Paul's letters that way. What are we doing? It seems the Paul's letters are truly not God's words. How can the Paul's word be taken as God's word? The Bible was put together by men, not by God. Why didn't we realize this fact? This is where we made our mistake. That's right. In the time of the apostles, people wouldn't treat Paul's words as the words of the Lord Jesus. You are right. Why didn't we think of that? That's how it was in history. It must have been that way. Right. For almost 2,000 years, people all treat Paul's words as God's words. How could we have been so ignorant? We thought Paul's words were the words of God just because they were in the Bible. That way of thinking must be mistaken. It goes against history. Brothers and sisters, why do people worship the Bible and blindly trust it? Because they don't know it was composed by men, which is not according to God's will. So they place blind faith in it and worship it, taking every word of it as God's word. That goes against historical fact and comes from human ignorance. Let's look at what Almighty God says. Paul's letters in the New Testament to the churches were not the revelation of the Holy Spirit, nor words directly from the Holy Spirit. They were simply Paul's exhortation consolation, and encouragement to the churches during the time he worked, as well as a record of his many works. Everything he said that edified others and had a positive effect was correct, but his words did not represent the words of the Holy Spirit and did not represent God. To regard man's letters the record of man's experiences as words spoken by the Holy Spirit to all of the churches is a grave misunderstanding and the worst kind of blasphemy. He was not a prophet or a foreteller, just a working apostle. 
a sent apostle, and so his own work and the life of his brothers and sisters were what mattered most to him. So he could not speak on behalf of the Holy Spirit. His words were not the words of the Holy Spirit, much less the words of God. Because he was merely one of God's creations and not God incarnate, his identity was different from that of Jesus, whose words were the Holy Spirit's words, God's words. For Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God. How could Paul be his equal? If people hold the letters or words like Paul's to be the utterance of the Holy Spirit and worship them as God, it shows that they are too undiscriminating. To put it baldly, are they not purely blasphemers? How can a human being speak on behalf of God? How can people prostrate themselves before the letters and words of a man, holding them to be a holy book, a heavenly book? Do God's words simply fall off of man's lips? How can man speak on God's behalf? Brothers and sisters, now we can see which words are indeed the words of God and which are the words of men. In the past, we trusted and worshipped the Bible too much. We believed the Bible was God's inspiration and that it was His Word. And we thought it was composed by God, but that was a terrible mistake. Without truth, men are easily deceived. We don't know how to tell God's words from the words of men and insist on calling man's words the words of God. That is simply grave ignorance. Paul was merely a servant sent by God. He was not God incarnate. He could never express the words of God. If men have put Paul's words on par with God's words, then they are seriously offending God's disposition. For so long our belief in the Lord was actually shaped by Paul's words, and so were our works. We treated Paul's words as God's words and ignored the words of Lord Jesus. Now I finally understand. We were following a man and worshiping a man. Yes. We mistook Paul for a God-man. Paul occupied the most space in our hearts. We had little room left for the Lord Jesus. How is that believing in the Lord? That's believing in Paul. In the past, we just blindly trusted and worshipped Paul, and we mistook his words for the words of God. We were ignorant fools. We were following a man, letting a man guide us. That isn't believing in the Lord. Yes, that's following a man and worshipping a man. How could our faith in the Lord not be misguided? We believed according to Paul's teachings. How could we become followers of God's will? But that only he who does the will of the Heavenly Father will enter. Only the word of Lord Jesus is the authority and the truth. Man's imagination is not the truth, not the standard of entering the kingdom of heaven. All those who have followed the footsteps of God to this day are those who have come before the throne of God. Right here, right now, we get together, but very soon.